Welcome to the transformative journey at the heart of this creative space, overhauling and rebuilding this disaster of a workbench. Today we're taking on the challenge of revolutionizing this space into its peak functional state. Imagine controlling and accessing a powerful workstation computer and harnessing that power across the shop over a single cable. Add to that a stable workspace that won't be shaking in frame on camera all the time and have purpose-built organization for the tasks at hand. We are gonna use a healthy dose of 3D printing, including embedding steel into a 3D print to make some LTT dreams come true on a slightly more reasonable budget. Let me start by explaining with this corner here. Since I set this studio up, I've been trying to achieve what I want from this with monitor mounts. This is my second or third iteration on this. And unfortunately, like some of my friends and far too many of my exes, they're just not stable enough for my liking. So I'm going to turn to a 3D printer's best friend when it comes to stability, not therapy, but 4040 T-slot extrusion. Now I've designed up a 3D printable bracket that's gonna go on each end of the workbench and hold one of these extrusions in place. That'll free up the maximum amount of workbench space since they'll be off the edges of the bench, allowing me more work surface to actually work. Now I love 3D printing, I really do, but I'm not sure that it's gonna be solid and stable enough. And also I'm worried about hanging that much tech off of 3D prints, which is why I'm going to be embedding steel inside of my prints. Now this quarter inch mild steel should easily provide the stability I'm looking for from this new design, but there's one more key to improving the stability of my workbench, and that is this new standing desk that's going to be the base of the whole build. When FlexiSpot reached out about sponsoring this video, I was thrilled to work with them again. I use their E7 standing desk every single day in the studio, and I legitimately really enjoy it. Now this is their new E8 standing desk. This new desk has these beautiful three-stage oval-shaped legs that I think look slick and also allow for quite a range of height adjustment from 23.6 inches at the lowest up to 48.8 inches at the highest. This is great if you're working from home or always at your desk. You can get up and move around but still keep doing what you need to get done. This thing can lift up to 352 pounds. There are a handful of color options that you can pick to fit your aesthetic. I personally went for this light colored bamboo top with a black frame because I like the contrast and I think it fits my studio pretty well. I also really like the bamboo for not only its aesthetic, but its environmentally friendly nature because bamboo is a rapid growing material, so it can be easily farmed over and over again for production of stuff like this. The biggest thing for me in this particular project is the stability of FlexiSpot desks. These things are just so stable when you compare them to the budget frames like I'm currently using for a workbench over there now. This thing is gonna be such a better base to build what I want on top of. Check out the links in the description to find the latest deals from the folks at FlexiSpot. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Now let's go put some steel into a 3D print. Now, my original intention for these brackets was to have them laser cut out by one of the many services that are out there, but I dragged my feet too long and I'm on too tight of a deadline. I've got to get these made and nobody could cut them for me in the time I needed. So I'm going to have to make them by hand. I used to be a metal fabricator for a living. I can do that, no problem. But I'm wondering if I can't still use a laser to save myself some time. I have the Xtool P2 CO2 laser, and there's no way it's going to cut this quarter inch steel, but will it mark it well enough for me to use as scribe lines to then cut on the bandsaw? Let's find out. I don't currently have any laser marking spray, so what I'm going to use is Sharpie. This is what I would usually use if I was trying to scribe lines manually onto a piece like this, that, or die cam, but I try to avoid die cam when I can. If you know, you know. I dialed in some manual settings for how I want to run this thing. I put in the thickness of the steel since it's 6.35 millimeter. I put it at 6.4 millimeter being quarter inch steel. And then I dialed up the score power to 90%. I don't want to push the laser to 100% if I don't have to. And I set it for five passes around. I figured if it's not going to do a lot, I might as well do it a bunch of times. After running, I pull out the piece and I can say, I see my design on here, 
Using a paper towel soaked in acetone, I'm able to wipe away the Sharpie off the surface really easily. And honestly, this turned out excellent. It may not translate very well on camera, I can't tell yet, but the lines are black. Whether it be because of a good scribe into the mill scale on the steel, or maybe when I wiped away the Sharpie, some of the Sharpie kind of got stuck in the lines. I don't really care. It turned out excellent. And this is absolutely a technique I am going to use in the future. Time to center punch for drilling. Then we can clamp our plate to the drill press table. Side note, makers, DIY people, even professionals. I see it all the time, especially in videos on YouTube of people just hand holding materials while they're drilling them on the drill press. Do not do this. It's not just a safety factor, which that's a big factor. If your part's not properly clamped and the drill bit grabs into it, it could spin around, launch off of there, hit you, or spin around and cut you wide open. It's also an accuracy and quality thing. If you're using a drill press, you're probably trying to get accurate and straight holes. So if your part is just held by hand, it could wiggle, it can move a little bit while you're drilling, hurting the quality you're trying to achieve. Clamp your part down, it does not take that much additional time, and it will be a significantly better experience in every way when it comes to drilling. Professional fabricator rant out of the way, time to drill some holes. With our lines laser scribed on, our holes drilled in, we've got a steel plate ready to become a reverse puzzle as we cut away the parts we don't need. Then after a bunch of annoying noise and dust later, we have the bracket we were looking for in the steel the entire time. Then I can deburr the part, knock down the edges so that it's not terrible, and get it prepped for never being seen again. And with my non-laser cut steel brackets in hand, I really, really wish I would have ordered them from a laser cutter, would have saved me a lot of time and trouble. We're ready to embed steel into a 3D print. I'm sure plenty of you have probably figured out what the heck the idea here is already, but let me show you the design. I created these 3D printable brackets that are gonna cap off the corners of each front of the desk and hold those 4040 extrusions. But inside of these designs is a pocket that's gonna hold the steel bracket. Exactly the same concept as embedding magnets into a 3D print. We'll pause a certain layer height, insert our steel, and move on. I've thought about doing this forever, and this is finally a project where it makes sense to do it. But before I insert my steel into my print, I don't just want to put cold steel in there and have it cause all kinds of issues. So I first scuffed the surface of it to give it a slightly rougher finish and knock the mill scale off of it. Then I applied some adhesion promoter from Bamboo Lab to the surface of it, just as I would a print bed, figuring it couldn't hurt the print success chances. And I popped the brackets into the oven, aka the Chidi X-Max 3 with the chamber heater turned all the way up, the bed temp at 110 Celsius, and the nozzle heating just to throw some more heat into the chamber. In Slicer, I set the print to pause at the height that I needed. Then I could go over to the oven, pop out my bracket that's nice and toasty, go to the print and drop it into the cavity that's already there for it. I designed this cavity to be a little taller than the actual bracket. The idea being the last thing I want is to hit resume and have my nozzle dive into steel. Now this did not go perfectly, but it did let me discover something new that I love about my Voron 2.4, or new to me. You see, my design wasn't perfect. Instead of having only straight bridging sections over top of the steel, it tried to make a couple of turns around corners, which printing onto the steel just was not working. So filament was bunching up. That's okay, I just had to babysit the print a little bit. I knew that as long as I got some good straight sections bridging filament across there, that it would recover and build on top of what was there. But despite my best efforts, sitting there watching it, working with it, the tool head still collided with some of that debris from time to time and caused a couple of layer shifts. But this is where I fell in love with my 2.4 again, because when it collided and layer shifted, I hit pause as quickly as I could. And then because of the flying gantry design of the 2.4, the mechanics of it, I could actually fully 100% rehome, run a G28 command, let it home X, Y, and Z, as long as the print isn't fully filling the bed, that can work on this. And then I was able to hit resume, 
and it picked up where it was supposed to be, AKA I de-layer shifted it. And I did this three times throughout this process. I've got my bracket, I've got my 4040 extrusion. So the very first time I'm ever mating the two together and it fit in like a glove, just as it's supposed to. I can also put screws into the side of it with some T-nuts and it's designed to screw in from the bottom, which means, sword in the stone here, I need to tap the end of this extrusion. With that out of the way, it's time to clean this desk off, get the new desk in place, and we can get these installed. Side note, the best furniture dolly around is a Matco Creeper. I've been using this thing for like 15 years. I've moved engines on it, all kinds of stuff. The eagle-eyed among you will notice that this is not the bamboo top that I'm putting on this bench. Despite liking that thing, there's a couple of reasons I wanted to go with the butcher block top that I previously had. One, it fits the aesthetic of what I want on this side of the studio, and that's really important to me. Two, it's reliably flat. It's not perfect by any means, but I have built numerous machines on this without issue, and that's something I really need to rely on. And three, I designed these brackets with the thickness of this butcher block top in mind, and the bamboo, while doesn't feel weak, I would worry a little more about putting screws into it and having all of this be as strong as I need. The bamboo top is sticking around. It's gonna be used on the workbench on the other side of the studio where you see me doing a lot of the work in this video. Now it's time to assemble the brackets with the extrusions. As I already showed you, I tapped the bottom of the extrusions. So four M5 screws go through the plastic, the metal plate, and into the extrusion to hold this all together. But something I should note, I mentioned earlier the layer skip issues that I had on the prints. You can clearly see evidence of that. The adhesion on the area where that was happening is by no means perfect. This is ASA material, so it's already prone to wanting to layer separate it, not in ideal conditions to begin with. I'm not at all worried about this though, because as we install this bracket onto the bench, you can pretty clearly see what's happening here. The screw is traveling through the plastic, through the metal, and then through the next layer of plastic into the butcher block top, sandwiching the whole thing together. The layer adhesion where that line is, it could completely separate, I don't care, and everything is still gonna be held together. And I've shown you enough of the steps at this point, so I'm gonna throw this second one of these brackets on and get this whole assembly together and show you the final result. I am in love with this new setup. Sometimes you get to the end of a project and you feel drained and defeated and you're just happy it's over with. And I'm happy this is over with, but I am energized by it. It gives me such inspiration for working with this desk moving forward. This is not complete by any means. You'll notice I haven't gotten to the single cable connection back to my workstation computer. I simply do not have time to fit that in this video. And I honestly don't think it would do justice to that project. I'm really excited about that and I want it to be its own dedicated video at this point. Currently, I'm using the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the new M3 one that I'm testing out, connected to this Acer high refresh rate monitor to just use at the bench for right now. It's not gonna be the long-term solution, but it's something to work with for the moment. As far as this whole setup is concerned, the desk is so nice and stable now. It has some wiggle on it because of the carpet that I'm standing on, that the desk is on, it has some give to things. My desk that's on concrete to my right over there is rock solid, so this just has carpet working against it. The worst thing I could say though is, the monitor arm, it's a new monitor arm mounted to this extrusion and the extrusion is so solidly mounted. Like if I grab it, I'm moving the whole table. I'm not moving it, but uh, the monitor arm has some wiggle. If you know of a rock solid monitor arm, this drives me nuts. Let me know in the comments and maybe I can try out something else yet again when it comes to that. This side over here is where it's really showing what this whole system is about and what I'm loving about it and what I was hoping for. 
My welder soldering iron is on a little shelf mounted to the extrusion up off the bench. Now I've got my benchtop power supply tucked underneath of that. The area that those two tools are taking up now is less than half of what it was because I could suck all that over here and get it up off of the bench. And that's the idea here. I think I'm gonna make some mounts to put my LTT screwdrivers and a few more hand tools up on the edge here or maybe at the edge of the desk. The whole idea is just to free up my workspace and not clutter it up with things. It should be cluttered with the projects, not with the things I need to make the projects. I am legitimately excited to be working with this bench again, and I am going to be showing you a lot more of it, both that single cable computer system I'm going to be adding to here, you know, streams moving forward. These extrusions, I'll probably mount at least one camera for a slight overhead angle while I'm doing builds, because I think I'm going to start doing some more build streaming in the near future, and this whole setup is aiming toward that, getting the computer ready and other mounted systems so I have things at hand and I'm not fumbling around the entire time. And I'm glad I tried embedding steel into 3D prints. That was something I wanted to do for quite some time, and it worked out beautifully. It could have been a lot better, and I've learned a lot for the next time I do it, which will absolutely happen again in the future. So maybe consider trying that out for one of your projects and uh, get parts laser cut, not cutting them by hand. Don't waste your time. The steel cost almost as much as the quote I got for getting them lasered. I just didn't have time to wait. I want to say thank you one more time to our sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot. I've been wanting to do this exact project for months now, and I just couldn't justify the time until they came along and sponsored this video. So thank you so much to them. Check the description for links to the latest deals from FlexiSpot on Black Friday and your holiday shopping. Check it out. All right, folks, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy the last desk build I did where I 3D printed some tools for woodworking. I custom made tools to make that desk. Go check that one out. Or this video that YouTube thinks is best for you. I don't know what it is. They pick randomly. Thanks for watching, folks. See you in the next one.